The White House announcing President Biden is going to travel to Brussels next week to meet with NATO allies as Russia presses on with its invasion of Ukraine. Let's bring in Bloomberg's Washington correspondent, Anne-Marie Hordern, to tell us, first off, exactly what we know. There are a couple of conferences, right, Anne-Marie, in Europe, uh, um, a European Council summit and a NATO summit. Is he going to be in attending both in Europe? Yeah, it sounds like he's going to be telling anything that has to do with Ukraine, that it's happening in Brussels, kicking off, Matt, with that extraordinary NATO meeting that Jens Stoltenberg just announced for all NATO members and heads of state. So that takes place next Thursday, March 24th. That's where the president will be in Brussels. Jen Psaki coming out at the White House podium and the press room just moments ago announcing this. Also, she was asked about what other potential trips can the president have on this big European trip. We know that Brussels is one of them. She was asked about Poland. She was also asked whether the, the president would meet with Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukraine's president. And she basically said they're still finalizing the trip. It doesn't seem that anything at the moment is off the table. And, and Maria, as we sort of think about the strategy and what people will be talking about, um, what ultimately do you think are going to be some of the key questions as we start to hear a little bit more detail on what the trip entails? I think the trip at the moment is really largely also symbolic in the sense that the United States wants to make sure that they are going physically to the NATO HQ in Brussels and showing a very much so united force alongside NATO allies against President Vladimir Putin. We should remember this is something that Putin does not like to see. He loves a divided West. So seeing the president also take this trip is very meaningful. It also comes after a weekend where there was uh, shelling and missiles very close to a NATO member. Poland, their border with Ukraine at a military facility that in early February, U.S. and NATO forces were actually using with Ukrainians. So I think this comes at a very uh, interesting time after that attack. But also, there's a lot of talk and concern, and we've seen this a number of times publicly from officials, about questioning if President Vladimir Putin would use chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine, which Jake Sullivan on the Sunday shows this weekend said that that would mean severe consequences for President Putin. What kind of consequences, Anne-Marie, does that mean that the U.S. would then get into this conflict and we'd have uh, a, um, a direct or maybe an indirect war between the U.S. and Russia? Well, at this moment, the president has said a number of times, and that does not seem to be like this is something he has wavered on, that there will not be U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine. There's been lots of questions about whether or not NATO forces would set up a no-fly zone. Again, the answer from officials is like, no, that is not happening. And one thinking is, if you get NATO involved, that just potentially is more of an impetus for Russian soldiers to actually want to fight against an America or NATO force. So. At the moment, Matt, it's a very good question. What is left to sanction or potentially punish the Kremlin, given the fact that there has been an onslaught of financial and economic sanctions that we see are hurting the Russian economy?